What's up, Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Buy for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple and our winners for the Canoe Stance giveaway. But first, let's jump into the show, and Apple has released the latest iOS 8.2 beta to developers, including the Watch Kit development tools that will enable them to start creating apps and software for the Apple Watch that we expect to see in spring 2015. Now, new information from the Watch Kit SDK reveals the two different screen resolutions for the two Apple Watches. The smaller 38mm Apple Watch has a resolution of 272 by 340 while the larger 42mm watch has a resolution of 312 by 390 Apple refers to the watch display as Retina and instructs developers to use image assets at twice the resolution. Now, in the notes, Apple says, The Apple Watch aims to blur the boundaries between physical object and software through the digital crown navigation tool the Taptic Engine for Soto Alerts, and Force Touch, a new touch control system. Thoughtful design should contribute to this experience of hardware and software feeling indistinguishable. Man, uh, I have no idea who could have written that up. Like, really, I can't put my finger on it. All right, one other note. Currently, Apple Watch third-party apps require a connected phone to allow them to function, and developers will need to be mindful of that where fully native apps that will be able to run on their own on the Apple Watch will come later in 2015. So logically, an Apple Watch that requires no iPhone whatsoever comes in 2016, the smartest time to buy one. All right, DisplayMate recently published their latest results of their display color accuracy shootout to find the best mobile displays amongst phones and tablets. Now, even though the iPad Air 2 finished near the top in a couple of categories, the iPhone 6 Plus and the Air 2 finished 5th and 6th place overall in display color accuracy with the Galaxy Note 4 taking the top honors and the Surface Pro 3 coming in 2nd. Amazon's Fire HDX 8.9 inch also performed better in these tests. So if you're super defensive about your iPhone, you can tell people in the YouTube comments below that display color accuracy doesn't mean everything. All right, in tech down the road that will make your phones only better, Sony, which supplies Apple with their camera components, debuted their new 21 megapixel image sensor with an ultra fast autofocus that also takes 4K HDR video. You can even see a comparison of image quality here from the previous sensor. The new sensor is called the Exmor RS IMX230. Its stack design cuts down on size, which might help remove that camera nipple on your iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, but I know some people like nipples. And it has 192 autofocus points, which can track faster moving subjects instantaneously. So my prediction, get ready for this, is that a future iPhone will have a 21 megapixel camera. Uh-huh, you heard it here first on the Apple Bike. All right, Apple announced last week to its accessory partners in their made for iPhone and iPad programs that new lightning connectors and specs will be available for them to build new accessories. That includes Apple's proprietary connection previously reserved for its own iOS devices. Accessories that still only have a USB port to charge them could now use a lightning port in the future or using a lightning cable as a headphone cable is another option that could be implemented by accessory companies in future designs. All right, everybody, now this next story could get a little salty, but a UK market research firm called YouGov collected all their research data from a sample size of around 10,000 people to create general profiles for a typical Samsung fan and a typical Apple fan in the UK. And their findings? Well, a typical Samsung fan is a 40 to 59 year old male, describes himself as polite, but is on occasion disinterested. Gucci is his top clothing brand and he drives a Vauxhall. Now, compare that to a typical Apple fan that is female, 25 to 39 years old, describes herself as clever, but on occasion is control freaky. Hollister Company is her top clothing brand and she drives a BMW. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty accurate. But if you sift through the data, there is one thing and one thing only that both sides agree on. The pet that both Apple and Samsung fans are most likely to have is a fish. Who knew? All right, let's announce our winners of the Canoe Stance Mini Tripod giveaway from last week. The correct response for what did you see when I gave you a hug is two teddy bears. So how did our winners feel about it? On Twitter, Richie Singer said it made him feel very good. 
Did you really go there? Yeah, you did. All right, over email, Ashley Edwards said, it made me feel happy and made me want to cuddle you. Oh, that's so sweet. And on Twitter, Chocolate Devotee said, watching those bears made me want to hug my best friend. Hashtag never too old. <coughs> I just think I threw up in my mouth, but yeah, that is commitment. All right, congrats again, and we will be in touch with all of you. Email me anytime at theapplebite at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong, and I'll write you back if I'm not styling my hair. All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. Thanks so much for watching, and we will catch you all next time for another bite of the apple. <laughs>